Welcome back. It's a very special episode of One Out Racing today because as you can probably see behind me, it's the big one today. Next to mapping, this is the next biggest thing the Turbo is ever going to do and it's gone for its very first MOT today in six years. Um, I don't know how it's going to do, genuinely. Um, this was really just a test bed just to put money where my mouth is uh, and just really see how it gets on. But genuinely, genuinely buzzing to see how this gets on down there. I'm hoping the list of stuff to sort out isn't too bad. Um, I'm a very sensible person, so to keep things legal, it went on the back of a truck. Um, and the only mishap so far um, was when I managed to actually drive it up to the back of the truck, all of a sudden I get a shout to say that it's absolutely pouring fuel out the bottom of the car, which turned out to actually be the push fitting on one of my filters. Um, I didn't have a clamp on it. Um, I actually thought it was going to be strong enough, but you know, you never learn these things. So fixed that on the back of the truck and it's gone. So he's already given me a call and said it's going all right so far. Um, said so they're going to bleed the brakes and stuff while they're there, but just keep everything crossed. Um, I've sorted the insurance out, even with all mods declared, it's like less than £300 benefit of being old. Um, so we are nearly there. I mean, I generally don't know what I'd do if he rings me and says it's past the MOT because feasibly I can drive it. I mean, oh yes, it's not quite finished, but I can absolutely drive it as its current state. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. I will report back as soon as I find out more information. It failed. But that's all right. There it is. Uh, I didn't really expect anything else. I mean, let's face it. I've built this car myself over a period of a really long time. Uh, it was inevitable I was going to miss something or something wasn't quite right. But all in all, it actually went pretty good. So that's the list. Now it looks terrible, but it's actually not that bad. Uh, they actually did the MOT test uh, before they did the couple of fixes I needed doing to it. So some of those got flagged on there as well and they've ticked those off. So uh, let's run through it. So they uh, had to re-thread one of the bolts to the lower arm because a couple of the threads were a little bit shoddy, which is why I couldn't get the bolt in. That's done. Uh, they re-bled all the brakes. And they said that the thing, pretty certain the master cylinder is shot, which is why it's binding the brakes. That's all right. So I've ordered a new master cylinder. That should sort out at least two of the problems. Uh, there was, I stupidly left the rear anti-roll bar on the back, the custom anti-roll bar, without actually fully bottling it all up. So it's just on there for testing. So that came up with four fails, because obviously it was not joined onto the anti-roll bar in separate places. So, uh, so I've removed that for now while I'm waiting for the new bolts to turn up. Uh, what else have we got? Oh yeah, for some unknown reason, all down one side, I've got uh, indicator, side light and rear light just aren't working. So something's obviously gone, like a bulb's gone and it's blown the whole circuit out. So that was four failures or three failures. And then one of the main ones was repair, because uh, what how do they put it? Do not drive until repaired dangerous is that I've got a pretty hefty oil leak coming from a couple of little places at the front. Now when I've had it idled in here, obviously, it probably didn't actually make it that bad. But obviously, once they started driving it and warming it up, uh, it started building up a bit of pressure. So it was smoking pretty bad. So I did drive it home. I was allowed to drive it home. Um, it's not very far away, so I just cruised along nicely. But it actually drove pretty good. Um, considering it's on a base map um, and it needs the alignment doing really badly, it was, it was pretty good. It was pretty good, but it started smoking just before I got home. So I was definitely freaking out that it was just going to set fire after six years of building it. Uh, so what I started doing as you will see, um, I started stripping it back. So I've already sorted out a load of things. Um, there was one more clip was needed on the fuel filters. Even though they're push fittings, they still need to have clips on them. Uh, so I've done that on that one. Um, I'm just about to pull the radiator off so I can get to all the sandwich plate and all that stuff where the oil is. I've, I've got a funny feeling it might be coming out of the oil feed to the turbo. Um, so it's always had a slightly do dodgy AN fitting on it. So if it needs to be, I have to get a new braided line for it. Otherwise, uh, I'm probably not going to take you through a lot of the fixes because it's just genuinely fixing stuff either I've told you about before or it's not very interesting. So there'll either be a time lapse or some kind of like, it's done. Um, and then when it's finished, we'll be booking it back in for the MOT. Uh, and assuming I can bleed the brakes properly once the new mass cylinder's on, I'll drive it back down there. Um, seeing as it actually went pretty well last time. Uh, so wish me luck. Time lapse time. Oh, actually, can I just ask, why is it freezing again? Not two days ago, I had shorts on walking around loving life, and now I've got the woolly out on the six layers on. What is going on with the weather? Uh, right, so that's the rear end roll bar off. Uh, so that comes about four of the failures that I had. Um, and uh, um, I saw the wiring out. Uh, insulated a few bits, tied a few other little bits up that I didn't think they were happy with. That's done some more, so I reckon on with the uh, electric. So I've already tested them out. Um, it looks like it really is just the right side repeater and the rear fog light. Now, 
one thing I thought I would do, and this is probably something I would always recommend, if you ever have to fix anything, it's your chance to upgrade, fix, sort out any little bits you're not happy with, especially when it's a project like mine where you've been doing it for so long. When you go back to the jobs you did at the beginning, you're just not happy with them by the end usually. So I'm going to take the opportunity to tidy up a lot of this. Um, this was very much a temporary fix to try and reroute the, wire, uh, the cooling until I knew they actually worked okay. Um, so I'll be cutting all this around and replacing it all with proper pipe. Um, I've got to tidy up a few other little bits around here as well. But the culprit that we think for all the oil leaks is in this general area here. So it's either going to be this oil feed for the turbo or it's going to be the coolant hoses or the actual sandwich plate itself. So I said, I'm just going to strip some of this back. Um, probably going to put some sort of uh, some of the sealant tape on some of the threads. Just make sure they're okay. Um, I do remember this oil feed um, fitting, the AN fitting on it, not fitting particularly well before. Like it needed to really crank it on before it would stop swiveling. So there's a chance maybe the seal's gone in it. Um, but I mean, it might just be that it's leaking from multiple places. But one way or another, it's getting on the exhaust and it's going to set on fire eventually. So um, I'm saying I'm going to strip some of this back off, and I might actually show you while I'm doing it because um, obviously you've never actually seen the turbo side of this really, other than when it's all covered in the Kevlar jacket and stuff. So yeah, I'm absolutely flying through it at the moment. Uh, the electrical gremlins, as you would have seen, I'm just trying to tackle. I've got no idea what's going on there. So that one indicator that doesn't work, um, and all the others work, and the bulb's okay. Um, and it's the fog light, but a fog light might just be a bulb. I've got no idea what's going on with that. So it's probably going to be some dodgy wire somewhere, which I'm really not up for. Um, but anyway, let's carry on cracking on. We are nearly there. Right, I'm trying to get my phone to today, so you can already see uh, down pipes off. I so say it's got a flexi pipe there anyway, so I can just hang off. Oil returns taken off, or oil feed, sorry. Um, it's a bit easier than taking it off up there. Um, I've drained the oil, uh, taking the oil return off as well. So I said most of the oil's in there. It still looks brand new because it is brand new. It's about the fourth time I've changed it. Um, I can already see, which we'll have a proper look at in a minute, uh, right back here along the bottom of the block, there's a load of oil in there. Um, I don't know whether that's spraying up from somewhere or what, but we'll get the turbo off, fingers crossed. Um, and I actually will, hopefully, try and get some better bolts as well, because look at this mishmash of like random stuff I had kicking about. So I'll try and get, maybe get some of the proper studs or get some proper bolts for this while I'm at it as well. Um, yeah, so let's keep on going. Okay, so I did actually have to take off a little bit more than I thought. You know, there's little things you forget, obviously, in the cooler pipes going into the turbo, the air filter duct pipe, uh, little things like that. So I've marked up a couple of little things, obviously the bleed valve as well, uh, which I don't imagine I'm going to need to start with. Uh, but there it is. That is a standard manifold with a KO3 turbo bolted onto it. So I've all tied this bag up a little bit. Um, I actually fitted this when um, I actually had the turbo on the car and it wasn't the easiest thing in the world. Um, this is one of my main culprits I'm not too sure about. I mean, anyone out there will tell me whether that is still supposed to swivel, even when tightened up. I don't know if that's squirting some oil out or not. Um, I've tightened it up as much as I can, and it doesn't seem... I certainly can't feel any oil around there, so maybe it's not that at all. But um, in here, as you'll see, this is my modified... Anyone who's got a single Cento or a say Cento that's actually had one of these engines, this metal oil uh, water pipe that comes out of the block usually goes all the way to the very end and down. Um, obviously, I've got a massive turbo there now, so I've had to basically modify one, i.e. cut it and weld a bracket on, uh, and then it just makes it go straight down into this nest of pipes. Um, again, I suppose if you were going to do it, if I was ever going to do it again, I would probably just hardline a lot of it. 
Um, but either way, um, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to first try and suss out where I think the actual oil leak's coming from. Um, it's going to be so difficult, but all I can all I can really do is work my way through everything. And as I put it back on, make sure it's tightened up, make sure it's sealed, make sure I've got all the right fittings. And there's nothing to like you know left to chance. Um, and as soon as my new sandwich plate turns up, I say I'll fit that, and that's a non-thermostat one. So that'll just let oil run straight to the filter, and it will go straight through the oil cooler. But I'd rather it be a little bit too cool for for, for more of the running than to not be filtered. Um, and then we'll just cross everything that it doesn't leak again when I put it all back together. Um, you might notice just one little tip for you. Um, even like, you know, somebody like me, I guess, who does cars a lot, it's easy to forget things. So this is for my bleed valve. Um, so all I've done is I've just marked this out, end up is, uh, and I've put another piece of yellow pipe on there. Just so you know which one goes at the top, which one goes on the bottom. It's pretty obvious because one's short and one's long, but you know, you never know. Um, either way, um, I'm going to start cleaning up, and then as soon as I think I've sussed out everything, um, I will take you through uh, anything else I think is interesting. Right, so I have cleaned everything up. Um, I've gone basically through with just some WD-40 and some rags and stuff, and I've just cleaned all the block, all the fittings, anything anywhere that I can see oil effectively, um, in the hope that when this does finally go back together, because it'll all be so clean and dry, um, it won't all be shiny where it's had a little bit of oil on it, if it's leaking oil anywhere, I should be able to find it a lot easier. So for the time being, um, I'm going to leave that for now. Um, so I'm still waiting for my sandwich plate to turn up, my new adapters and everything. Um, so, so I'm going to leave that. Um, there's not really much else I can do with it at the minute until I figure out if there's anything else going wrong. Um, one thing I am going to rule out, and this is purely just me being paranoid, is I did notice, uh, hopefully you'll be able to see. Um, so just between... Uh, we're going to be able to do this with one hand, let's see. So just between obviously where the cylinder head and the block sits, I kept noticing like a little bit of oil. And it might just be, you know, my imagination, it might just be being paranoid, but it always seems to just be like a little bit of oil just pulling there. And I was like, oh. I mean, the chances of the head of having lifted, even if it's like, you know, brand new head gasket and stuff, it's done no miles. It's just done, you know, startups and stuff in my garage. But the chance of that lifting and it leaking oil out of one of the channels or it's done a head gasket is slim. But I'm just going through anyway and just doing a compression check. I did it yesterday, but the battery wasn't up to task really. So it wasn't really cranking over well enough. So I was getting low readings anyway, which is I'm hoping is what it is. Um, but obviously if I do the compression check and it's less, it was 150 across all four before. Um, so it's a good, solid, healthy engine. If that's gone down, obviously I've ran no boost through this car whatsoever. Then we've got a bit of a problem and maybe the head's lifted just when the fueling was out so bad. Which I, oh, you know, I'm just not up for that at all. I just cannot be bothered to do another head gasket and take the head off it. I've had the head off it a couple of times already, sorting out other problems. But if it is, it is because let's face it, this is going on long enough now. It's been like six years. So I'm gonna do the compression check. I'll report back, um, and then as long as that's all good, we're gonna move on to the next big job, which my parts have turned up for, which is good. Actually, do you know what? While we're here, for any of you who aren't familiar with the uh, compression check, you get. Uh, effectively, like a little kit like this, um, it really does just measure pressure. Um, you get uh, multiple fittings, so it's basically just this pipe. You get this pipe here with multiple fittings that you can get that are the same size as the spark plug. You just remove a plug, screw this fitting in, fit this to the end of that, um, and then you just crank your engine over. So you have to make it so it doesn't start. So I just unplugged the, uh, the coil packs and made sure the fuel pump doesn't come on so it's just not dumping fuel in it. Um, you crank it over until this stops going up. And if any luck, and you haven't had a bad day, uh, it's debatable, I suppose, really, what we consider to be good. I mean, like 150, I mean, you can see it on there, that you've got the green and the red. Anything that's even vaguely under 100 is getting pretty worn out. Um, and anything over sort of, I mean, I would say personally 140, you're probably good. Um, so I so said this has been 150 across all four cylinders before. Um, so that's basically what I want. I mean, I said I've ran no boost for it at all. So I'm going to crack on doing it. Um, I probably won't record it because, you know, there's enough for me to be keeping an eye on, I suppose, but we'll give it a shot. Here we go. Let's try this one-handed, shall we? Put the terminal back on. Right. Take ignition on. Oh, you're going to see this going up. There we go. Now I've had a chance to compose myself. Um, I actually did that test wrong. So really, you should take all four of your plugs out. Um, I was being lazy, but it just means that your engine can spin over nice and freely. You can get enough speed in it. 
um, and it's not trying to compress those other three cylinders as well. Um, as soon as I did that, I put the tester back on it. Boom, I had 150 PSI across all four. Now I do actually have a very slightly janky thread on my uh, piston number one, I think it is, um, for the spark plug. It's something the next time I ever take the head off it, I'm gonna have to just make sure I tidy it up because it just catches a bit. Um, it just means, if I can find it, uh, the little threaded end that you use to actually screw the uh, the tester in just doesn't want to, because you have to basically do it on the twist of the hose. It just doesn't want to go in enough. So whenever I do it with this, it always comes out about 120 PSI and it always freaks me out. So in the end, I went for this push type one. So you put that on and you just have to press it as hard as you can into the actual piston, uh, sorry, into the spark plug hole like that. Um, it just means it seals it on there instead. It's hard work doing it on your own. Uh, but I did it that way and I got 152 or something out of it. Um, so they are bang on across all four. So that rules out, I hope, any chance that my head gasket's gone, I've got any oil ways leaking and stuff. That oil leak is just something stupid on the front um, and it's made it worthwhile pulling the turbo off. So that is good news. So now the compression test is done. I can stop making all that noise. Now we're on to the master cylinder, uh, which I'm really hoping turns out to be quite a nice job because theoretically it's four bolts and then a load of faff in with bleeding the brakes and stuff. So let's do it. Uh, right, so I'm just doing the mass cylinder now. So I've actually got most of it done. I've drained the actual reservoir off, so that's down on the floor. Um, but something worth bearing in mind, because I actually didn't know this was even a thing, but you can get proper spanners for this, like tapered spanners. Uh, it's an 11 mil for a Fiat Cinquecento, future reference. Um, but I never even knew it. Um, so basically, they're apparently they're really easy to round off the bolts on these. Um, I don't know why specifically. Maybe they're like a softer kind of metal. Um, but you get these tapered ones, and if you look, it's actually got like an extra... I suppose it kind of extends around the actual bolt, uh, sorry, the nut itself. So you just put it over the top of the brake pipe, slide it down, and then you can get your proper leverage on it. Um, and so far, so good. I'm two down. Um, as long as the other two come undone, we are good. I've got the other spare part on the bench. Uh, nothing real major to do then. All I need to do is just undo the bleed valves on the front and just pump the brakes a little bit just to try and get a little bit more out of the reservoir. So when I pull it out, it doesn't just dump fluid everywhere, um, which I've already done a little bit already. Uh, so yeah. Um, and then what we have to do is hope, 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 hope that it's this and it's not any other problem with the brake. So, um, yeah, I'll keep on going, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Uh, right, do you know what? That actually wasn't that bad. I uh, managed to get it out not without too much difficulty. I mean, obviously, you've got to be a bit careful with the hard lines for the um, for the brake lines because obviously you don't want to kink any of them because then you're screwed. Um, but yeah, managed to get it out. Um, on the surface of it, it didn't actually look that bad, but looking inside there, that does not look good. I mean, it is, I, mean, I don't know, again, you're not going to be able to see it, I don't think, but it's really rusty around the inside. Uh, I've got a feeling that's actually stuck in as well. I think that's actually meant to come all the way back out, which does explain a lot um, of why we couldn't get it to bleed and why the brake pedal felt weird. Um, so I'm going to give this a little dog. I'm going to tip, turn the camera around because there looks like to be some sketchiness in there. So when I tip it out, we'll see what comes out of this. But otherwise, I'll show you the new brake cylinder in a minute. Obviously, if you've never seen one before, um, and you will see the massive difference between that and the one that's on it. But um, yeah, let's keep rolling on. Uh, her fingers crossed, getting it back in, as they say, is it's the exact opposite of taking it off. Um, we'll see if that goes to plan. But um, yeah, look, so this is it there. Let's see what comes out of this thing. Oof. I mean, that's kind of a combination of old and new. Because you can see up here, it's really dark brown. And this is the new stuff. But I mean, this has been bled like a lot. They've put quite a lot through this. So I can only imagine that one part of this is basically blocked and not working properly. And I said, okay, where that's stuck. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to grab the other one. I'll show you what I mean. Where this, I think, is meant to be poking further out, that little cylinder on the inside. So let me grab the new one. We'll take a look. All right, this is a new one. Didn't go mental. This is a little padded thing. Um, like I said, unless you're going nuts, you don't really need anything like properly special. But we have a little look. Obviously, it's going to look a lot newer because obviously it's brand new. And then just all the little bungs in there to keep it clean. But you'll see what I mean. Straight away, you can see that that little piston inside there, which obviously is what actuates all of this, is not stuck about 10 million like that one. So that was almost certainly what the clunk was when I pressed the brakes after not using it for a long time. Um, they were proper stuck. I pressed the brake pedal pretty hard and it went clunk. Um, and I think it's just where that was seized up and it's just jammed it in there. So now it just moves the last little bit of travel and it's not moving the hole in and out. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to get it on. Uh, no big science to it, get all the brake, um, brake pipes bolted back on again, get the actual cylinder back on, which is here, which I will just give a little bit of a clean up. Brake fluid on my floor again, 
Um, I'll give it a little bit of a clean up, but it's not actually that bad. There's no, like, no, there's not a particular amount of load, load of grime or anything in it. Uh, that just presses on top of the uh, uh, onto the actual cylinder itself. Um, and then I'll start topping up. I'm boring a pressure bleeder off and make shading again, so I'll get that done. Um, so right, let's chuck this on. What time is it? It's 10 to 10 at night. Uh, I may or may not be bothered to sort of get this very far, but as long as I can get it on there in a couple of bolts. Wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. Overall, uh, that's gone pretty well. Um, I really didn't have to do a huge amount. Uh, like I said, it's just getting all the hard lines in the same place, but I mean, it's pretty difficult to get them wrong because uh, they're so rigid, you'd be, you'd be hard pushed to get them in the wrong place anyway. Um, I did clean up the thread before I popped them back in. Um, and again, I just used that special spanner to tighten them back up. Um, I did leave all the bungs and stuff in just to make sure. Um, I didn't get any rubbish and stuff in there, but um, I'm gonna use the old reservoir still. Um, it's absolutely fine. I've got a little, little bit more cleaning out to do, but otherwise, uh, that just push fits into there, Ooh, like that. And I've already been down to good old Euro car parts. Love you, good Euro car parts. So a little click and collect. Um, I actually got way more than these. I've got a litre of this stuff in the end, uh, just to allow for basically top ups and bleeding all the air and all the old um, brake fluid out. Um, I didn't go for anything mental, um, in, in all truth. I mean, there might be at some point I'll go to like a dot five or something, but I'd rather go with a really good quality dot four than a cheap dot five. So especially if I have any problems with it leaking and stuff like that. So, yep, I'll get that on there. Um, I'll fill it up. And then I borrowed the brake bleeder. I don't actually remember what I even did with it. Oh, it's in the back of the car. I'll go grab that. And we'll start bleeding this stuff up. And done. That pushed in nice and solid. So that's good. And uh, before I do anything else, um, I'm absolutely going to be tidying up all of this lot. Um, there's always that risk as you're kind of working your way through jobs. You leave spanners out because you need it. But let's get all this stuff tidied up first before we move on to any kind of topping up fluids. Slight change of plan. I thought, actually, I'll do the brake bleed at the end. It feels like a kind of final job, you know, once the car's back on the floor. You know, I don't know. It feels like it's kind of finishing up. So um, I'm going to move back on to actually just putting everything back together as a reassembly. Um, so I did make a bit of a decision on it, though. Um, after a bit of advice, a bit of thinking, a little bit more advice, a little bit more thinking, um, I've decided just for the sake of getting it through the MOT and it's my 10-day retest window, um, I'm just going to ditch all the sandwich plate, the oil cooler, the remote filter and stuff like that. Um, it probably sounds a bit like backhanded doing it this way. It's not a huge job getting it back on, but I will show you. So what I've basically done is this is a little Renault Clio filter. So it's only really short. So the Fiat ones are about this big um, and the Clio ones are only small. So I've got this little uh, Clio filter on there. Look, and basically it does fit. But to get this off, you just have to undo the bolts and lever the, the manifold forward and then you can get it out. Um, so all I'll do is you'll see just there less to fit in from the old pipe so it's just bagged up so i'll stick that somewhere um i'll bung that up with something just for now uh, just so no dirt and stuff gets in there and it doesn't leak um, and i'll just tie the other one out of the way just to keep it sensible so in theory now i've removed basically anything that could be leaking oil apart from the turbo feed so that's this is the only thing now so within reason if this leaks then cool i'll be able to see that pretty quick um what that does mean is obviously one i'm simplifying the whole system uh two i'm actually still waiting for some fittings to turn up so if they don't turn up in time no i'm no foul um, and it should be give or take i'll have to drain the coolant again to get the radiator out of the way um just pull the exhaust forward a little bit i might put a new gasket on there then um, and then i can put a sandwich plate on and all that jazz so it's not that big a problem in theory i could go a few miles quite a few miles before needing to do it anyway because i don't need to service it um, I am cheating a little bit, and you'll have to forgive me for cheap, cheaping out. Um, I did buy a whole new bottle of ready-mixed coolant for it, some decent stuff. But the coolant I had in it already um, was already basically brand new. Um, it came out clear as anything. I made sure I put it in a bowl that was like basically spotless. So I'm going to chuck that straight back in there. Um, it will be fine for now. Um, and also, like once I've done a few miles and it gets a chance to go through the system, and again, because I'm going to have to drain it to get the sandwich plate on, um, I'll drain it out then, and then I'll get rid of it, and I'll put the new stuff in. Same as the oil i've just gone for a proper basic like cheapo oil um too many times have i put decent oil in something i've just built um and i've dumped two liters of it on the floor so again that'll be a little bit of like a bedding in running in kind of oil um, and then when that's done we're all good i'll drain it service it do all the jobs in one go happy days so for now i'm going to start this um assembling it again um then hopefully we'll have no oil leaks no coolant leaks no air leaks no boost leaks and no leaks of absolutely any shape or form I have absolute confidence in my abilities.
things I go. So, um, one of the things that I am going to do is use some of this stuff. It's really good. Um, it's got like a Velcroed sort of like heat shield. It's for like pipes and stuff. You probably would have seen it throughout my engine bay because there is absolutely no room. Um, so it's very much just a simple case of just measuring how much you need, cutting it off, and then it just um, it just folds around and Velcros onto itself. So, so this is the metal pipe. So originally this was, would have been a rubber pipe that comes from the expansion tank down and joins back up with the radiator, but obviously because of the turbo and everything, I didn't want rubber piping going through there. Um, so I've got this metal pipe work. Um, so I'll put one of these um, heat shields on it and I'll get this all tied up out of the way anyway, but it doesn't move a huge amount. Um, but yeah, it's going pretty good so far. Um, nothing, nothing else to report so far. Now, thank you so much for sticking with me on this one. Um, it doesn't really feel like we've got any further, really, does it? I feel like we sort of went back a bit um, and then got back to where we basically were, but hopefully in a much better place. Uh, like I said, I've redone a load of stuff. I really did do to this right at the beginning of the project. Tied a load of things, just kind of rerouted stuff, just simplified it a lot, just to get it through the MOT. Because uh, once the MOT and stuff, then obviously I can kind of mess about with it as I need, but I put the oil cooler and stuff back into it. Um, so right, last job, everything's back together. I've had no oil leaks overnight, which is great. No cooler leaks overnight, which again is really good. Um, it's just bleeding the brakes. Now, I didn't film this. Um, it's not particularly interested, uh, really, unless obviously you want to do it. There's loads of information out there how to bleed your own brakes anyway. The Haynes manual is pretty clear on it. Um, effectively, you just put the, if you do either one man job, I've got a pressurized brake bleeder that just forces fluid into the reservoir. And when you go around undoing the bleed, bleed valves, bleed nipples, call them what you want, in sequence, it just forces the air and all the old fluid and stuff out of it. Now the front, not a problem. Thankfully, after I got the res reservoir on it, uh, both the fronts bled up really nice, whereas before, one of them didn't bleed very well at all, like hardly anything came out, so sweet. Uh, went to do the backs, nothing. I got hardly anything out, and when it did, it was leaking out from behind the threads. So I just did what I usually do now, and I recommend you do this. Don't do what I always do, and just persevere and just keep messing about with it, because inevitably you just get annoyed, especially when it's getting a bit late at night. So I went to bed, asked a couple of people's opinions, spoke to my mate Matt, um, he suggested a couple of things. And while I was working, typing away, um, just that dawned on me just to basically just pull the actual bleed valves, bleed nipples out of the back drums and just check them. Um, so I just did that, took them back out, one of them almost entirely blocked, the other one only about half of it really that was coming out. Um, so I just got a little piece of wire, pushed it down through, cleaned the holes out, sprayed some WD-40 through it and it jetted out the side compared to when I first put it in, hardly anything came out. Cleaned all the threads up, backed it back on, pressurized the system up. Beautiful. It came straight out, the back left especially, kicked out a load of old, really brown brake fluid. Now, any of you have never seen with new brake fluid before, that's how it's supposed to look. Nice, clear, almost looks a little bit kind of like, I want to say petrol color, but you know, um, the stuff that was in there was really got like golden maple syrup kind of color. Um, so that bled out beautifully. Loads of air came out of that. Um, so you have to do it in sequence though, so you do front right, back left, front left, back right, basically. So I did all that, peachy. So I haven't actually tested the brake sort of feel of the pedal yet, so I was going to take you with me on that and see whether it's actually worked. But if that's done it, that saves me a huge job, because one, that should pass the MOT then on all my brake problems. Two, I've obviously saved, I got just over a £200 quote to do the mass cylinder, I did it myself. Um, so that saved me a load of money. And three, I can drive there. I can drive it back to the MOT test legally um, and I wouldn't have to worry about crashing into the back of a truck or something. Um, yeah, win-win all round. So all I do is, I'm going to test the brakes now um, and I'm not going to fire it up, but I will film, hopefully, firing it up, reversing it out and just testing out the brakes on my little private stretch of road back here. Because um, obviously, keep it legit. You can't be doing legal things, people. Even on YouTube. Um, but I want to do it now because it's a bit late now. It's... Uh, after 10 o'clock um, and it's not a particularly uh, quiet car sometimes but yeah let's do that we'll jump inside the car we'll press the brake pedal and see whether it feels spongy as hell or whether i've actually now got a little bit of firmness hey can i just say one of the best things i've done to this car recently was i got some like uh lemon essential oils i uh, put a couple of drops of that in some water and stuff and just went around just cleaned all the inter all the interior all the door cards all the metal the plastics the roof everything because it smells so like just sort of old and musty. I mean, I don't have a particularly damp garage. It does, the wall leaks a little bit sometimes, but I think just all the time it's been sat here now and not having much airflow and stuff in here, it just smelled rough. 
but it smells like literally like nothing now like i mean i can't even smell the lemon like it just smells perfect but anyway that's beside the point oh god even though i know this went really well like with the track record i've had with this car now i'm just expecting to press the pedal and just see fluid jetting up the wall um but let's just give it a shot um it's either gonna work or it's not um, obviously you're not gonna be able to tell whether this is working but oh see now that pedal is really really firm actually now i'm hoping obviously once it uh once you fire the car up you've got like the booster and stuff on it um because that's really not moving at all uh, well it's moving a little bit but probably about quarter pedal travel um so again i'll have to question it i mean it might have a little bit too much fluid and i'll check that again in a minute anyway uh but fingers crossed i've done everything i was supposed to have done properly um and when i said when i actually come to use the brakes or i fire that up um they work perfectly so that's good no sponginess there at all probably what i will do is once I've done a few miles on it, um, especially if it starts to feel that I may recheck it anyway, just top up the fluid and just give them a little bleed. But otherwise, absolutely mint. I'm going to take this opportunity to kill this video for today. Uh, I said the MOT is uh, Wednesday today. The MOT is on Friday. Uh, so really, I've got just tomorrow night just to button up anything else. Now, the only thing I've not been able to fix, partly down to time, partly down to actual effort, uh, is that side repeater there. Um, and the fog light, the fog light doesn't work. I mean, the fog light might just be a battery, I don't know, but this one I can't work it out, I've no idea. So that might be the only thing I'd have to ask them to do. I'm hoping it doesn't cause me any massive problems passing the MOT or end up costing me a load of money. But either way, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, really good day for this. So the next time you're gonna see me, hopefully, will be when it's sort of vaguely daytime uh, and me just cruising very, very lightly, just out of my garage, down the road, spin it around and come back up again. Um, if that all goes to plan, I don't get any weird leaks of stuff. I'll chuck the bumper on it. Um, I've actually picked up a couple more bumpers. So I've got four spare bumpers now. Um, so I may well, at some point, make another bumper for this. But for now, I'll slap the old one back on um, and just check everything else, make sure I've got it all sorted, pump the tyres up, whatever I need to do. And then it's MOT time again. Um, and I will record it more this time. As I didn't record any of the MOT last time because I was so nervous about doing it and it all going wrong. Um, so that's enough for now. Enough of that jibber-jabber, as Taylor Ray would say. Uh, and I'll see you tomorrow when well, it's the next morning and what a sunny morning it is so I've cleared everything out from behind the car I've got loads of stuff behind it so I've just dumped it all in my back garden for now um, I've just done everything just check check the oil check everything's not leaked still no leaks um, other than that I'm just going to fire the old boy up uh, then get underneath it with the camera and stuff and just make sure once it's actually got some pressure going through it there's no oil leaks or anything like that just from like the turbo feed um, there's so much less on it now than there was before so there shouldn't be any reason for there to be anything um, but yeah, we'll just see how we get on. Hopefully the battery's all good. I'll probably put it on charge tonight anyway. Welcome back. And look at what a sunny day it is too. So it's a good sign. Um, so I've checked over everything this morning. I've done all the oil and the coolant, made sure there's nothing leaking. Uh, there's no reason for it to really. I've simplified it so much now. There's hardly any uh, actual extra stuff on the oil, on the oil system. Um, so really all I'm going to do now is just give it one last little eyeball check just to make sure I've not forgotten anything because it is easy. Um, then I'm going to stick the camera adapter in the window reverse out and just go down this little private road here um, just make sure everything's all right make sure it stops and goes and all that kind of stuff and fingers crossed that is it we are done for the MOT I can relax tonight rather than being out here every single night till like half ten um, I mean I'm probably going to try and suss out the electrics for that, that indicator maybe just for another half hour tonight just to see um, but if I can't suss it out I'll just get the garage to do it they're, they're, they're bound to do it a little bit quicker than me anyway so um, but enough of this let me grab the uh, let me grab a camera adapter and we can give this a shot Right, now I tried to just pull the car out of the garage so I could start the video off with the tripod set up, the car reversing out, uh, you know, get something outside of my garage for a change rather than just seeing this all the time. Reversed it out, everything was good. Ran really badly and realised I left the HD lead off, which is good because it was proper sounded rough. Got it outside, it was actually running pretty good. No coolant leaks, no oil leaks, nothing. I was buzzing. So I took a few photos for my read value for my insurance because I've got a bit of front, back, side, all that jazz. And then the fuel pump starts making a bit of a weird noise and I look underneath the car and it's leaking fuel. So not a problem, okay? So I know there's a load of fittings under there now with like a, <clears throat> there's an extra fuel filter and like some uh, little reducer and stuff. So I'll go through that in a minute. I'll jack the car up. I can fix that. But there's one problem. Uh, it's leaking oil. It's not leaking oil where I thought it was leaking oil before because obviously that's all peachy. It's not coming out of the turbo feet. It's not coming out of the oil filter housing. Um, it's not coming out of the turbo or anything like that. It looks like it's coming from if i can get the camera down it somewhere around this end 
Now, I'm really hoping it's a camshaft seal, because uh, I'm going to take the cover off and see whether it's leaking oil from there. My mate Matt said he's known them go quite a lot on his recent ones, which he said is getting, if I can, <clears throat> might be able to get it out without actually uh, taking the whole top of the engine apart and all that jazz. I could just probably prize it out, which I could do without, and I haven't got a spare, so that might stitch me up for tomorrow unless I can get one from Euro Car Park Super Sharp. Um, but if it's the oil pump, or oil pump seal or something along those lines that's a nightmare because i'll have to take off well a lot <clears throat> drain the oil take the sump off take the oil feed off like the whole shebang um if it's the sump if the sub's leaking that's still not good because i'd have to drain the oil again take the sump off which means i have to take the exhaust off or at least the top front part of the exhaust and it's just going to be another late night doing it so just keep everything crossed it is something silly um, i said i'm going to sort the fuel pump problem out first Make sure that's all buttoned up and I'll just check all the fittings again because I'm fed up with this thing leaking fuel. Um, so just beg the question, why me? Why does this car hate me so much? Like all I've done is spend time and money on it and it just wants to kill me all the time. Um, so anyway, I'm going to crack on. Uh, I'm probably not going to record it because it's just like going over the same old tap. I'll be back in a minute for a report. Whether you see this or this will be whether it's good or bad news. Now I said I wasn't going to record it, but I've already found something. So if you look in there, that is definitely where the oil is coming from. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but that is definitely the source under there somewhere. So I'm going to take uh, this pulley off. So you just have to undo the alternator belt and stuff like that just to loosen it off. Take this pulley off um, and see what's going on underneath. Right, so I've got the pulley off. Let's show you what I'm working with here. So if I turn the light on. Right, so you'll see there, this is the crank pulley. Obviously, it's the timing belt and stuff like that, and I've had this off now. I will apologise, because my camera packed up and I ran out of batteries. I've already tidied this all up, but there was a little pool of oil just in there. Now, the only place, because obviously it can't leak upwards, so it's not leaking from around the sump, is the seal that sits just behind here. So, um, what I'm going to need to do is... Now, I've had this, cam, this uh, pulley off before, so all I'll do is I'll undo the tensioner, take the... Uh, timing belt off, that's not too much of an issue. The, the key here is either to guarantee that you don't rotate this once you take the pulley off, otherwise you'll knock the timing out, or I'll try and be sensible here. Um, I'm going to rotate it to try and get the line leveled up and make sure that it's level at the top as well. And then that way, then when I put it back on, because it's got like a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, like a key on this so that it can only slide on one way anyway. Um, but I'll give it a go. I'm going to try and undo it a little bit first with the timing belt on. Um, if this comes undone a little bit, then sweet. Like I know it's not going to rotate when I put it back together. So um, probably what I will do is I'll, uh, if I can get it undone, I will um, probably not talk it up until I've got the cut timing balance stuff back on. And that way, again, if it rotates a little bit, then it's not knocking my timing out. It's a little bit of a, I don't want to say lazy way of doing it, but um, I've had it before and I've got the timing out by like 180 degrees and it's not obvious to start with. Um, so I'm going to get cracking on that um, and then just wish me luck. So... My mate Matt's already messaged me a really short video because I was expected to have to take the oil filter, the oil pump off to get the seal out from the inside, but he's actually shown me how you could do it from the outside. So in theory, time about pulley off. If the seal comes out, then it's just hitting the new one in with a put a socket over it, just really gently, like slowly ease it into there. Then that should be it. Then I'll just go and work off the uh, fuel uh, the uh, the fuel leak. But again, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We gotta do this first. So I'll set the camera up, let's get cracking. Takes a poop and the president too And the fancy grand banker in his three-piece suit The big fat general and all of his troops The truth of the matter is everybody poops Right, so now what you probably wouldn't have seen from the time lapse because they're a bit shaky um, is I actually managed to get that off pretty easy. There you go, that's it. And then that is the seal that I've got the problem with. Now, I will say that doesn't really look like the one that I've got, so I'm a little bit concerned, but I mean, obviously it's different brands and stuff, so we'll have a little look first. Um, what you will be able to see just in there is this little keyway here, and that goes in that little notch there. So there's only one way this can go back on. So because I didn't rotate that at all um, while I was undoing it, because I still had the timer belt on there anyway, as long as I don't touch anything, what I'll do is I'll put it back on, I'll loosely do the bolt up, I'll put the timing belt and everything back on, then when I'm talking it up, if it does happen to shift a little bit, at least it's turning everything, then it's rotating the whole lot. Um, so I shouldn't knock anything out. So um, I say I'm going to try, regardless, that seal's got to come out, regardless. So I'll take it out, and then hopefully the new one looks right. But I think some of them, they've, uh, they've given me the wrong part. It's not even close. I checked the website, 
the part number matches, the part number on the box matches, but I think the box has been resealed. It's the wrong freaking price, not even close. Look at the picture. It's like twice the size, it's not even the same design. If I put the picture up of what it's supposed to look like, so the one that's actually on the site, that is the exact part that I need. So I don't know what that means now. Well, it means I'm not going to get through the MOT tomorrow, but I'm going to have to try and order another part. I don't know where I'm going to get one from. Uh, yeah. Well, I tried. I tried to get it in. So, yeah. I'm going to go crack on and do a few little bits, tidy up, put my tools away. And then we'll start worrying about where I'm going to get another one of the seals from and ringing up your car parts to tell them they've been plumbed and given me the wrong bit. Happy days! If you're just watching this video thinking, ah, oh, that poor lad, like, you know, he's nearly there, it's close to no cigar, but do you know what? It's only one little problem. It's not one little problem, because I'll show you this. I swear to God, this car has been so freaking annoying. If you look there, can't you see that lovely little puddle there of nice, fresh, coolant? Ah, I wonder where that could be coming from. Oh, maybe out of that hole in my water pump, which wasn't there before, which is there now, and there's now leaking water out of it. How is there a hole in my water pump when there wasn't a hole in it before? Oh my god. I tell you what, this car is literally getting so close to me, just rolling it out in the road, pouring some of my new uh, shower optimal onto it, setting fire to it, and just denying all knowledge. I'll be like, nah, not my car, bruv. I, uh, I don't do cars, they're stupid. <sighs> Give up.